I'm going to start with a bit of a tune. Yeah? yeah? Ready for it? Ready for a little bit? Take it away, friend. You used to stand so tall, intense and so alive. No ties, no lies, no price. No need for compromise. So say you won't surrender. Gotta fight for the life you Thank you. Our dreams, we must always resurrect them. I want to be a mother. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an astronaut. I want to play to a packed house at Madison Square Garden. I want to be a financeologist. The last one there, it's not a mispronunciation. Being a financeologist is the current dream of my nine-year-old nephew. When people tell him, that's not really a word, he says, I'm reinventing. <laughs> As children, we are given the breath to dream big. We're told to reach for the stars and that anything is possible. We begin to imagine what we will achieve and who we will be in the future. Think about it. How many times as a child were you asked, what are your dreams? Or what do you want to be when you grow up? Now, Think about as an adult, how many times have you been asked, what are your dreams? Not, what do you do for a living? What's your job title? But what are your dreams? As the years accelerate and life gets crowded by responsibilities, our dreams, they get shrouded in the mix. They get put on hold. They get strangled because we only want to pursue the purest vision of those dreams or they get put away altogether. As adults, our childhood dreams can seem silly, laughable, way too hard, or just simply impossible. Instead, we double down on building successful careers, taking care of our families, and paying the bills. We build a routine, programmed, scheduled life. I am a proud eternal dreamer. I believe that the act of consciously dreaming has created a life for me far beyond any career guidance or any path my college degree should have brought me down. I believe and I know that having a dream is the difference between enduring life versus really embracing it. And if you keep them front and center, dreams can be the source of fulfilling and realizing some of your core human needs. Okay. So you're probably sitting out there wondering, is she really going to talk to me about what I need to give up in order to get to my dreams for the next couple of minutes? No. I am not going to give you advice by saying, give up your job, give up your life, run away to Bali to make yourself feel whole again. <laughs> but what I can tell you is that you can have a dream while pursuing stability in life. What's important is the act of dreaming. Get that going, and the rest will take care of itself. I'd like to invite you into a couple of my stories to share a little bit about my path and my dreaming. It's about 1986. I am the chatty age of four, and seven of us are packed elbow to elbow around the kitchen table. Dinner has just been done, and the kettle is on the boil. My mother quietens down the banter in the kitchen because she wants to share a quick story about a song that she's about to teach us. Usually, it's a song that her mother sang to her, and now she wanted to pass it along to us. So, verse by verse, we'd go round the kitchen table until we took the tune home. 
I'll bottle tight these lines, I'll write in case the ship may drown. Nobody is allowed to tell until this note is found. Some friendly breeze may change its course onto a foreign shore. But will anybody be so kind as to send it to Knockmore? Those sessions around the kitchen table, they sparked something in me. It was there where I began to hear notes, and I began to feel this little buzz in my belly. So, it made me wonder, what other notes are possible? But more importantly, how could I feel that buzz again? Fast forward a little bit. It is now 17, sitting at the kitchen table again with a new friend, the CAO form. A form that determines your collegiate destiny based on how many points you think you're going to get in your final exams. It's a, it's a great laugh. So growing up with a loving family with modest means, uh, I began to tech, check myself. I was always this dreamer that wanted to be a musician on stage. But I sort of took a step back and I started to weigh, how does a music degree stack up against a business, law, or medicine degree? Does what's written on the piece of paper actually matter? I didn't know. But I began to think so. To the dismay of my parents and everybody who knew me, by the time that form was submitted, everything even remotely related to music had been scrubbed. I studied business and law at UCD for four years, a degree that has served me well and continues to serve me today. But on a windy, dry day in September in my last year in college, as I was strolling through campus, and I was passing yet another one of those pillars decorated by music posters and advertisements, one of them escaped the tape that was holding it and flapped in my face. I straightened it against the pillar to have a read, and it was an advertisement for an audition to, for the UCD Choral Scholars. Hmm, got a little excited, got a little scared. I wondered if I could go home that night and dust off a little bit of just in time for the audition. I did, and I got in. The experience of the UCD Choral Scholars really reignited my love and passion for music in a big way. I left college after I graduated and moved to New York City and to pursue music, not business or law. See, I believe that there are many times in our lives when we have to put our dreams on pause. And that's totally okay. But your dreams don't ever permanently put you on pause. They will pop back up again. Why? Because they're the hope that there's much to achieve and that there's more than the present, even if the present feels great. Age 24, settled into New York, and I have refined my dream. I want to play to a packed house at Madison Square Garden. So, I joined every different type of band that would have me, from funk rock to pop rock to hard rock. I changed my image, my hair, and even thought about changing my wonderful name. I got a lot of, nice to meet you, Niam, or where are you playing against, Niamaha? Neem, naive, nymph, you get the idea. Alongside, pursuing uh, this dream of mine, I also kept a sensible corporate career alive. I even ventured back into the arena of law and passed the New York State Bar exam. It was a lovely piece of paper, but at that time in my life, I really didn't know what to do with it. So, I gave it to my father, and he framed it. <laughs> you see, dreams are an interesting thing. They keep popping up, and they keep coming back. So, I began to believe that anything remotely unrelated to me pursuing my dream needed to go, right? So I started making cuts. I went part-time in my job, I went part-time in my relationships, and about a month after I made all of these cuts, my band fell apart, and so did I. 
as the words of our song goes. I'd spent a lifetime chasing glitter in the wind. I was stuck in dry rotation. No water was in my well. I was just a dead man walking slowly into hell. Yep. <laughs> See, I'd held my dream so tightly, this dream to perform at Madison Square Garden, that I was actually killing it. And anything that wasn't that dream didn't feel like I was living my life. But I didn't really discover just yet why I had held so tightly onto this dream. During one of my lower moments in New York City, I got asked to perform at an Irish festival at Lincoln Center. I thought, oh great, another big venue to add to my hit list. Having run so far in the opposite direction from singing anything that resembled an Irishy folk song, and having denied my dear mother the Irish album she had incessantly asked me to record for years, there I was, front and center, alone on stage, flanked by no musicians, singing at an Irish festival. <laughs> Tears a song, a sigh of the weary, hard times, hard times, you come again no more. Many days you have lingered around my cabin door. Oh, hard times, come again no more. I still hear the silence that swept through the audience when I rounded the first verse. It was like a lightness and a lift that just crept through me. I felt such resonance in the moment with the audience. And it transported me right back to the kitchen table where it had all began. The purest, unclouded moment where I'd fallen in love with music. And I had felt identity with myself and with those around me. It was at that performance that I also met Charles Hale, the MC of the night. And afterwards, we started having a series of conversations about what was missing in New York for artists. Together, we joined forces to launch Artists Without Walls, AWOW for short. The idea was to create a multicultural community of like-minded dreamers who regularly got together to create, to collaborate, and to consume. On one of my first nights at AWOW, I stood there in the audience, and I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about being the facilitator versus being the performer. But I stood there in the audience, and I began to have the same visceral feeling that I had watching them as when I performed myself. That moment when every cell in your body is radiating outwards at the same time, and you begin to receive that energy back. I finally began to understand why I had chased this dream. The ultimate dream wasn't to perform to a packed house at Madison Square Garden. And music? That was just the conduit to a much bigger need. My need, my human need for mass connection, mass resonance, and mass reach. After that night, I began to just let go of the Madison Square Garden dream a little bit more. And I began to just be open, as if I was a kid all over again, to what was possible. Over the past three years, Artists Without Walls has welcomed folks from, from uh, over 65 different countries to share their work with us, both folks who are active, passive, and aspiring dreamers. So, to my aspiring musicians, to my aspiring astronauts, doctors, and financeologists, they're out there. Don't be discouraged if your dream takes you down an unexpected path. It will reveal to you, there will be moments 
and memories that will reveal to you a much deeper meaning behind your dream. And those dreams, let them expand, let them grow, take them with you every day. And if they get lost, resurrect them. Your dreams can be the drivers to motivate you in life, to be, to reach, to grow, and to expand, but more importantly, to live. Thank you very much.